Stories and Documentary Network The Timurid Empire, established by the formidable conqueror Timur, also known as Tamerlane, stands as one of the most significant and influential empires in the annals of history. Spanning from the late 14th century to the early 16th century, this empire not only reshaped the political landscape of Central Asia, Persia, and parts of the Middle East but also left a lasting legacy on the cultural, architectural, and intellectual domains of these regions. The Timurid Empire's fusion of military prowess and cultural patronage created a unique blend of devastation and renaissance that would influence future generations and empires. Timur, the empire's founder, was born in 1336 in Kesh, near modern-day Sharasabs, Uzbekistan. He emerged from relatively humble beginnings, yet his ambitions knew no bounds. Claiming descent from the Mongol conqueror Genghis Khan, Timur's rise to power was marked by a combination of strategic marriages, alliances, and ruthless military campaigns. His name would become synonymous with both fearsome conquest and grand cultural achievements. Through his dynamic leadership, Timur forged an empire that, at its zenith, stretched from the edges of China in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, and from the steppes of Russia in the north to the Indian subcontinent in the south. As we delve deeper into the history of the Timurid Empire, we will explore the rise of Timur, his extensive military campaigns, the administrative frameworks of the empire, and its lasting cultural legacy. This exploration will not only highlight the empire's historical importance but also underscore the duality of its legacy, marked by both extraordinary achievements and profound destruction. Timur, also known as Tamerlane, was born on April 9, 1336, in the city of Kesh, near present-day Sharasabs in Uzbekistan. His birth name was Timur, meaning iron, in the Chagatai language, a fitting moniker for the man who would later forge one of the largest empires in history. Timur belonged to the Barlas tribe, a Mongol-descended Turkic group that had settled in the region following the Mongol invasions. Though the Barlas were not directly connected to the ruling elite, they held a significant position within the local power structure of the Chagatai Khanate, one of the successor states of the Mongol Empire. Timur's early life was marked by the turbulence and fragmentation of the Chagatai Khanate, which provided both challenges and opportunities for ambitious leaders. He grew up in a time of political instability, with various tribal factions vying for control. This environment shaped his early experiences and instilled in him a keen sense of political and military strategy. It is said that Timur suffered a leg injury in his youth, earning him the nickname, Timur the Lame, which was later Latinized as Tamerlane. Despite this physical setback, Timur's ambition and strategic acumen set him on a path to power. Timur's rise to prominence began in the 1360s when he started to assert his authority over the fractured tribes of the region. He demonstrated remarkable military skill and political cunning, forging alliances and defeating rivals. Timur's ambition was not limited to local dominance, he envisioned himself as a successor to the great Mongol leaders, particularly Genghis Khan. To legitimize his rule and garner support, Timur claimed descent from Genghis Khan through his marriage to a descendant of the Mongol royal family. In 1364, Timur formed an alliance with Amir Hussein, a prominent leader in the region, and together they captured the city of Samarkand. This victory was a turning point in Timur's career, establishing Samarkand as his power base and marking the beginning of his rise as a major regional power. However, the alliance with Amir Hussein was short-lived. Conflicts of interest and mutual distrust led to a bitter rivalry, culminating in Timur's decisive victory over Hussein in 1370. With Hussein's defeat, Timur consolidated his power and declared himself the ruler of the Timurid dynasty, with Samarkand as his capital. Once in control of Samarkand, Timur set about consolidating his power and laying the foundations of his empire. He implemented a centralized administrative structure that balanced tribal traditions with the need for an efficient, cohesive state. Timur's governance combined traditional Mongol military organization with elements of Persian administration, reflecting the diverse influences that shaped his empire. Timur's consolidation of power involved both military campaigns and diplomatic maneuvers. He subdued rebellious tribes and rival leaders within the Chagatai Khanate, extending his control over much of Central Asia. His military campaigns were marked by both strategic brilliance and ruthless efficiency. Timur's forces were highly disciplined, 
utilizing swift cavalry movements and psychological warfare to overwhelm their enemies. His reputation for brutality also served as a deterrent, as many cities and regions chose to submit rather than face his wrath. In addition to his military prowess, Timur was a shrewd diplomat. He forged alliances through marriage and negotiated truces with potential rivals. His court in Samarkand became a center of cultural and intellectual exchange, attracting scholars, artists, and craftsmen from across the Islamic world. This influx of talent not only enriched the cultural life of the Timurid Empire but also reinforced Timur's legitimacy and prestige. By the late 1370s, Timur had established himself as the unchallenged ruler of a vast territory that stretched from the steppes of Central Asia to the borders of Persia. He continued to expand his empire through a series of campaigns that would take him far beyond his initial power base, carving out an empire that would be remembered for its extraordinary reach and enduring cultural impact. Timur's military campaigns were characterized by their vast scope and relentless execution, establishing him as one of history's most formidable conquerors. His empire, at its peak, spanned much of Central Asia, the Middle East, and South Asia, marking an era of both unprecedented expansion and profound upheaval. Timur's campaigns in Persia, modern-day Iran, were among his most significant and brutal. In 1380, he began his conquest of the region, targeting the fragmented remnants of the Ilkhanate, a Mongol successor state. His first major campaign was against the Khwarezm region, where he quickly subdued local rulers and incorporated the territory into his expanding empire. In 1383, Timur turned his attention to Khorasan, an important cultural and economic center. After a fierce siege, he captured the city of Herat, which he later transformed into one of the cultural capitals of his empire. The conquest of Khorasan marked the beginning of a series of devastating campaigns across Persia. Timur's campaign reached a peak of brutality in 1387 when he sacked the city of Isfahan. After a rebellion against his authority, Timur ordered the massacre of the city's inhabitants, resulting in the deaths of tens of thousands. This act of terror served as a grim warning to other cities and regions, underscoring Timur's ruthless determination to maintain control. The conquest of Baghdad in 1393 further solidified Timur's dominance in the Middle East. Baghdad, a city of immense historical and cultural significance, fell after a short but intense siege. Timur's victory over Baghdad marked the end of the Jalayarid dynasty and reinforced his reputation as a fearsome conqueror. Timur's campaigns in Central Asia were crucial in consolidating his power and securing his empire's heartland. After establishing his dominance in Persia, he turned his attention to the steppes and the territories of the Golden Horde. In 1391, Timur launched a major campaign against Takhtamish, the Khan of the Golden Horde. The two leaders had previously been allies, but a falling out led to open conflict. Timur's army marched deep into the steppes, culminating in the Battle of the Kondurcha River, where Timur decisively defeated Takhtamish. This victory shattered the power of the Golden Horde and secured Timur's northern borders. Timur's campaigns in Central Asia were not only about military conquest but also about securing trade routes and fostering economic prosperity. He ensured that the Silk Road, the vital trade network connecting the East and West, remained under his control. This strategic move boosted the economic strength of his empire and facilitated cultural exchanges that enriched Timurid society. One of Timur's most ambitious campaigns was his invasion of India in 1398. At the time, the Delhi Sultanate, ruled by Sultan Nasir Uddin Mahmud Shah Tuluk, was the dominant power in northern India. Timur's invasion was motivated by a combination of religious zeal, economic interests, and the desire to emulate the conquests of his predecessors, particularly the Mongol invasions. Timur's army crossed the Indus River and advanced towards Delhi, engaging in a series of battles along the way. The decisive confrontation occurred near Delhi, where Timur's forces, using their superior tactics and discipline, overwhelmed the Sultanate's army. On December 17, 1398, Timur captured Delhi and subjected the city to a horrific sack. The city was plundered, and its inhabitants were massacred, leaving a trail of devastation. The invasion of India demonstrated Timur's military prowess but also highlighted his ruthlessness. Despite the short-term destruction, Timur's invasion had lasting impacts on the region, 
contributing to the eventual decline of the Delhi Sultanate and paving the way for future Central Asian influences in India. Timur's military success was rooted in his innovative strategies and tactics, which combined traditional Mongol warfare techniques with his own strategic genius. Some key aspects of his military approach included speed and mobility. Timur's armies were known for their speed and mobility. He utilized highly trained cavalry units that could move swiftly across vast distances, allowing him to launch surprise attacks and outmaneuver his enemies. Psychological Warfare Timur understood the power of fear as a weapon. He often employed brutal tactics to terrorize his opponents, such as the massacre at Isfahan. This psychological warfare demoralized his enemies and forced many to surrender without a fight. Deceptive Tactics Timur was a master of deception on the battlefield. He frequently used feigned retreats, ambushes, and other deceptive maneuvers to lure his enemies into traps. These tactics kept his opponents off balance and gave him a decisive edge in battles. Intelligence and Spying Timur placed great emphasis on gathering intelligence. He maintained a network of spies and informants who provided crucial information about enemy movements, strengths, and weaknesses. This intelligence allowed him to plan his campaigns with precision. Engineering and Siege Warfare Timur's forces included skilled engineers who were adept at building siege engines and fortifications. This expertise was crucial in capturing heavily fortified cities and strongholds. Timur's ability to conduct effective sieges expanded his territorial control significantly. Timur's campaigns had profound and lasting impacts on the regions he conquered. While his military conquests were often marked by extreme violence and destruction, they also brought significant changes and contributions. Political fragmentation and realignment. Timur's conquests disrupted existing political structures, leading to the fragmentation of several states and the rise of new powers. For example, his defeat of the Golden Horde weakened their control over the Russian principalities, paving the way for the rise of Muscovy. Cultural and intellectual exchange. Despite the destruction, Timur's empire became a center of cultural and intellectual exchange. Cities like Samarkand and Herat attracted scholars, artists, and scientists from across the Islamic world. This exchange fostered a rich cultural renaissance that influenced art, architecture, and science. The Timurid Empire, under the rule of Timur and his successors, maintained a complex and hierarchical administrative structure that balanced centralized authority with local governance. At the apex of the administrative hierarchy was Timur himself, who held absolute authority as the supreme ruler. Below him, the empire was divided into provinces, each governed by appointed officials known as emirs or mirzas. These provincial governors were responsible for overseeing local administration, collecting taxes, and maintaining order. Timur established a system where loyalty to the central authority was paramount. He appointed trusted generals and family members to key administrative positions, ensuring control over distant provinces and territories. This centralized control allowed Timur to exert authority over a vast and diverse empire, from the steppes of Central Asia to the cities of Persia and beyond. Despite the centralized authority of the Timurid administration, local governance played a crucial role in maintaining stability and integrating diverse cultures within the empire. Timur recognized the importance of local customs and traditions in fostering stability and loyalty among his subjects. As a result, he often allowed local rulers and elites to retain positions of authority within their communities, provided they swore allegiance to him and paid tribute. The Timurid Empire was characterized by its cultural diversity and tolerance. Timur himself was known for his patronage of Persian culture and traditions, which flourished under his rule. Persian became the administrative and literary language of the empire, and Persian poets, scholars, and artists were welcomed into Timur's court. This cultural fusion enriched the Timurid society and contributed to its cosmopolitan character. Timur's policies towards conquered peoples varied depending on their resistance and strategic value. In instances of fierce resistance, Timur was known for his harsh reprisals, including massacres and deportations. The sack of cities like Isfahan and Delhi demonstrated his willingness to use terror as a tool of control and deterrence. However, Timur also implemented policies aimed at integrating conquered peoples into his empire. He often employed a policy of religious tolerance, 
allowing subjects of different faiths to practice their religions freely. This tolerance extended to Christians, Jews, and Hindus living within the Timurid domains, fostering a relatively harmonious coexistence. Economically, the Timurid Empire benefited from its control over key trade routes, particularly the Silk Road. Timur recognized the economic importance of trade and implemented policies to facilitate commerce and ensure the empire's prosperity. He maintained a network of caravanserais and trading posts along major routes, providing security and accommodations for merchants traveling between east and west. Timur's economic policies also focused on agricultural development and infrastructure. He encouraged irrigation projects and agricultural innovations to improve productivity and ensure food security for his growing population. These efforts supported urban growth and economic diversification within the empire. Timur's patronage of arts and architecture was a cornerstone of the Timurid Empire's cultural legacy. Recognizing the power of cultural patronage to legitimize his rule and enhance his prestige, Timur invested heavily in the construction of grand monuments, mosques, palaces, and public works projects throughout his empire. His court in Samarkand became a center of artistic innovation and intellectual exchange, attracting scholars, artists, and craftsmen from across the Islamic world. Registan, one of the most iconic architectural complexes of the Timurid era is the Registan Square in Samarkand. Constructed during the reign of Timur's grandson, Ula Beg, the Registan Ensemble includes three grand madrasas, Ula Beg Madrasa, Sher Dor Madrasa, and Tilya Kori Madrasa. These madrasas are renowned for their exquisite tilework, intricate geometric patterns, and majestic portals, reflecting the fusion of Timurid and Persian architectural styles. Gur-e-Amir The Gur-e-Amir Mausoleum in Samarkand is another significant Timurid architectural masterpiece. Built by Timur himself to honor his beloved grandson Muhammad Sultan, the mausoleum later became Timur's own final resting place. The structure is distinguished by its large dome and turquoise ceramic tilework, symbolizing the opulence and grandeur of the Timurid dynasty. Timurid art flourished under the patronage of Timur and his successors, blending influences from Persian, Islamic, and Central Asian traditions. Miniature painting, in particular, reached new heights during this period. Timurid miniatures are characterized by their meticulous detail, vibrant colors, and intricate designs. These miniature paintings often adorned manuscripts, illustrating epic stories, religious texts, and courtly scenes. Artists employed techniques such as gold leaf application and fine brushwork to create visually stunning compositions that reflected the sophistication and cultural refinement of the Timurid court. Following Timur's death in 1405, the Timurid Empire faced a period of succession struggles and internal strife. Timur had not designated a clear successor, leading to disputes among his descendants over control of the empire. Timur's empire was initially divided among his sons and grandsons, each vying for power and influence over different regions. This fragmentation weakened central authority and contributed to instability within the empire. Shah Rukh, one of Timur's sons, Shah Rukh, emerged as a prominent Timurid ruler who sought to consolidate and expand the empire. He ruled from 1405 to 1447 and focused on promoting cultural and intellectual pursuits. Shah Rukh continued Timur's patronage of arts and scholarship, fostering a period of cultural renaissance known as the Shah Rukh era. Under his reign, cities like Herat and Samarkand flourished as centers of learning and artistic innovation. Ula Beg Shah Rukh's son, Ula Beg, is renowned for his contributions to astronomy and mathematics. He established the famous Ula Beg Observatory in Samarkand, where he conducted groundbreaking astronomical research. Ula Beg's astronomical tables and observations were highly regarded in medieval astronomy and contributed to advancements in celestial navigation and calendar reform. Despite the cultural achievements under Shah Rukh and Ula Beg, the Timurid Empire began to decline in the late 15th century due to internal conflicts, external invasions, and economic challenges. Succession disputes among Timur's descendants continued to destabilize the empire, weakening its ability to defend against external threats. In 1507, the Timurid Empire fragmented further with the establishment of the Uzbek Khanate in Central Asia. The Uzbeks, under the leadership of Muhammad Shaybani Khan, challenged Timurid authority and gradually annexed territories once controlled by the Timurids. 
By the early 16th century, the Timurid Empire had effectively disintegrated, with its remnants divided among various successor states. Despite its eventual decline, the Timurid Empire left a lasting impact on the cultural and political landscape of Central Asia, Persia, and the broader Islamic world. The Timurids promoted a vibrant cultural renaissance characterized by the synthesis of Persian, Islamic, and Central Asian artistic traditions. Timurid architecture, exemplified by monuments like the Registan in Samarkand and the Gur-e-Amir Mausoleum, continues to be admired for its beauty and grandeur. Politically, the Timurid legacy influenced the development of subsequent empires and states in the region. The Mughal Empire in India, founded by Babur, a descendant of Timur through his son Shah Rukh, drew inspiration from Timurid administrative practices and cultural patronage. The Safavid Empire in Persia also traced its origins to Timurid lineage, reflecting the enduring legacy of Timurid political and cultural influence. The Timurid Empire exerted a profound influence on the Mughal Empire in India, particularly through the lineage of Babur, a descendant of Timur. Babur, who established the Mughal Empire in 1526 after the Battle of Panipat, drew upon Timurid traditions of governance, military strategy, and cultural patronage to shape the foundations of his new empire. Babur and his successors adopted elements of Timurid administrative practices, including the division of territories into provinces governed by appointed officials. This administrative structure facilitated efficient governance and centralized authority, enabling the Mughal Empire to maintain control over its vast territories. The Mughals inherited Timurid military tactics, such as the effective use of cavalry and strategic alliances, which were instrumental in their conquests and expansion across the Indian subcontinent. Babur's victory at Panipat, reminiscent of Timur's military successes, established the Mughals as a dominant force in South Asia. Like their Timurid ancestors, the Mughal emperors were avid patrons of arts and architecture. They continued the tradition of constructing grand monuments, mosques, and gardens, blending Persian, Islamic, and Indian architectural styles. The Taj Mahal, commissioned by Emperor Shah Jahan, is a testament to the enduring legacy of Timurid architectural aesthetics in Mughal India. The Timurid cultural and architectural legacies persisted beyond their direct rule, influencing subsequent periods and empires. Safavid Empire In Persia, the Safavid Empire drew upon Timurid artistic and cultural traditions, particularly in the realms of architecture and miniature painting. The Safavids promoted Persian language and culture while integrating elements of Timurid architectural styles into their monumental buildings and urban planning. Ottoman Empire The Ottoman Empire, although geographically distant from Central Asia, was influenced by Timurid artistic motifs and architectural techniques. Ottoman mosques and palaces incorporated decorative elements inspired by Timurid tilework and calligraphy, reflecting the cross-cultural exchanges facilitated by trade and diplomacy. Ming Dynasty in China Timurid influence extended to the Ming Dynasty in China through cultural exchanges along the Silk Road. Chinese artisans adopted techniques from Timurid ceramics and decorative arts, contributing to the vibrant artistic synthesis observed during the Ming period. The historiography of the Timurid Empire has evolved over time, reflecting changing perspectives and interpretations of its impact on world history. Early accounts Early accounts of Timur's conquests often portrayed him as a ruthless conqueror who inflicted widespread destruction and suffering. European chroniclers depicted him as a barbarian and a scourge of civilization, focusing on the devastation wrought by his military campaigns. Persian Historiography In Persian historiography, Timur was often romanticized as a heroic figure who restored order and unity to fragmented lands. Persian poets and historians celebrated his victories and portrayed him as a patron of arts, culture, and scholarship. Modern Scholarship Modern historians have adopted a more nuanced approach to studying the Timurid Empire, emphasizing its cultural achievements alongside its military conquests. They explore Timur's complex motivations, administrative innovations, and enduring impact on the regions he conquered. In modern-day Central Asia and beyond, Timur's legacy evokes mixed reactions and interpretations. Cultural pride. In Uzbekistan and other Central Asian countries, Timur is often regarded with pride as a national hero and a symbol of cultural heritage. His achievements in architecture, literature, and governance are celebrated as part of the region's rich historical legacy. Controversies. Despite cultural pride, 
Timur's legacy is also controversial due to the extreme violence associated with his military campaigns. The massacres and destruction caused by Timur have led to debates about his moral character and the ethical implications of his actions. The Timurid heritage plays a significant role in shaping national identities in Central Asia and neighboring regions. Cultural identity. Timurid architectural monuments, such as the Registan in Samarkand and the Bibi Khanim Mosque in Uzbekistan, serve as symbols of national pride and cultural identity. They highlight the region's historical contributions to art, architecture, and urban development. Political symbolism. Politically, Timurid heritage has been invoked to promote national unity and state legitimacy. Governments in Central Asia have utilized Timur's legacy to foster a sense of national identity and solidarity among diverse ethnic and linguistic groups. Educational curriculum. Timurid history and achievements are often integrated into educational curricula to educate younger generations about their cultural heritage and historical roots. This educational approach aims to instill pride in national history while encouraging critical reflection on complex historical figures like Timur. The Timurid Empire, founded by Timur, Tamerlane, in the 14th century, stands as a pivotal chapter in world history, leaving a profound and lasting impact on the regions it once encompassed and beyond. This empire, forged through conquest and characterized by cultural renaissance, shaped the political, artistic, and intellectual landscapes of Central Asia, Persia, and India. The Timurid Empire emerged during a period of political fragmentation in the aftermath of the Mongol invasions, consolidating vast territories through military prowess and strategic alliances. Timur's conquests extended from the steppes of Central Asia to the heartlands of Persia and beyond, establishing a unified empire that spanned diverse cultural and linguistic landscapes. His campaigns, though marked by military aggression, also fostered cultural exchange and artistic flourishing, contributing to a vibrant cosmopolitanism that defined the Timurid era. Culturally, the Timurid Empire was a beacon of artistic achievement and intellectual innovation. Timur and his successors patronized poets, scholars, and architects, fostering a golden age of Persian literature, miniature painting, and architectural marvels such as the Registan in Samarkand and the Guri Emir Mausoleum. These monuments stand as enduring testaments to Timurid architectural aesthetics and the fusion of Persian, Islamic, and Central Asian artistic traditions. In conclusion, the Timurid Empire represents a synthesis of military conquest and cultural renaissance, leaving an indelible imprint on the historical narrative of Central Asia and shaping the cultural and political identities of the regions it once governed. Timur's legacy invites ongoing scholarly inquiry and public fascination, underscoring the complexities of empire building and the enduring resonance of cultural achievements in shaping world history.